the humans. They are far too fragile and emotional to be of any concern. First researcher Zill Craig scoffed, his antennae twitching in amusement. Their bodies are soft, easily damaged. Their lifespans are pathetically brief, and they seem incapable of making logical decisions without their sentiments getting in the way. The other assembled researchers clicked and chittered in agreement. The human delegation that had arrived at the Interstellar Alliance headquarters earlier that day certainly seemed laughably unequipped to handle the cutthroat politics of intergalactic relations. I estimate a less than 10% chance that the humans will last more than one galactic rotation before either destroying themselves or angering a superior species and being wiped out, second researcher John stated flatly, his compound eyes glinting. More laughter echoed through the hall. Over 200 highly analytical, emotionless brains from a dozen ultralogical species concurred with John's assessment. When the humans had applied for membership in the Alliance, the researchers had almost rejected their petition out of hand. Letting those impulsive, irrational apes loose among the orderly galactic community seemed like sheer madness, but Alliance law required that every new species get a chance to prove themselves worthy. So here the humans were, dressed in soft clothing and yammering about equality and inclusiveness. It was almost a joke if a being as coldly rational as Zilkra could comprehend an emotional reaction like a joke. Give them five years before they do something stupid and get blown to bits, and a rate night researcher clicked. Her eight black eyes blinked in perfect synchronicity. The first chuckles had barely begun echoing through the hall when chaos erupted. Alarms began blaring as red emergency lights bathed the entire headquarters station in an eerie glow. Zilkrak stiffened, antenna standing upright, had the Erich Nyez ill-considered word somehow doomed the humans already. What is happening? John demanded as Alliance security officers stormed into the hall, weapons ready. The insectoid Zarn commander leading them raised a foreleg for attention. The station is under attack, she stated, her normally emotionless voice tinged with tension unknown hostile forces. They have disabled our outer defenses and breached sectors 3 through 11. On display screens hovering over the hall, visual feeds showed sinister, black ships flowing through the shattered remnants of what had once been the station's supposedly impenetrable outer shield. Swarms of gleaming silver attack bots streamed from the invader vessels, slaughtering all in their path. Shocked silence reigned. Then the screaming began. I do not understand. John wailed, tendrils of inky liquid oozing from his face as the analytical modules in his massive brain froze in disbelief. Our station is supposed to be impervious. The defense is rated to withstand assault even from the dreaded Narakta. His outburst was interrupted by a burst of static from the station intercom, followed by a screeching alien voice. For people of the Alliance, we are the P.A. Drillion Incursion Force. Your defenses have failed. Surrender and prepare to be annihilated. Resistance is... A loud thump echoed through the intercom, followed by sounds of a struggle. After several seconds of shouts, crashes, and metallic clangs, a new voice came on. Yes, yeah, screw your surrender demands. Calamari face, drawled the strangely accented voice. Zilkroc blinked in shock. That almost sounded like a human... We already took down your first three attack waves without breaking a sweat. And your leader here tells me you Parillians don't exactly react well to smoke bombs. So here's our demand for take your squiddy asses back through that portal of yours and don't ever let us see you around here again. Or else things are going to get very hot and uncomfortable for y'all real fast. Got it? Stunned silence filled the hall once more. Even the security officers froze, multi-jointed limbs locked in disbelief. Suddenly, the visual feeds clarified, revealing a group of seven humans standing amidst the shattered remains of a P.R. Rillian assault squad. Smoke and flames filled the corridors behind them. The lead human casually flicked glowing embers from the barrel of his projectile weapon before continuing. We'll give your ships 30 minutes to clear out through the portal. If we see so much as a single tentacle still poking through, after that, he gestured to the heavy weapon one of his companions was hefting. Let's just say, we've got a lovely little nuke here, with your name on it. The feed went dead. For several long moments, nobody stirred. John slowly, awkwardly wiped the ink from his orifices, tendrils still quivering. The first one to break the silence was researcher Zill Crake. It seems, he stated, antennae rigid with shock, that we may have underestimated the humans. 
Over the next months and years, the entire galaxy came to the same conclusion. The destruction of two-thirds of the P.I. Drillion Incursion Force in less than 20 minutes quickly exploded across the galaxy. Humans became the biggest topic in the Alliance virtually overnight. Some voices still scoffed, claiming it was a lucky fluke. But that opinion died swiftly, as humans racked up victory after improbable victory. Like when the human delegation to the Grand Council was assaulted en route by a band of space pirates confident of easy profit. They were found days later begging the authorities to take them into custody and spare them further horror at the hands of their weak, fragile captives. Or the time a crazed Karathi cult tried to unleash a lethal bioagent on Earth itself, only to meet a swift orbital bombardment. Turns out nuking things from orbit was rather simple, if one didn't burden themselves with insignificant things like collateral damage. But perhaps most impressive was humanity's sheer determination in forging their own path, when told their smartphones and Wi-Fi satellites breached Council tech regulations, they laughed it off and launched more. When faced with restrictions on AI research, they increased funding instead. And weapons bans. Well, governments might grudgingly agree just to keep up appearances, but they certainly didn't enforce such rules very hard. Within five years, humans had embassies on every major alliance world. Within ten, they had multiple seats on the Grand Council itself, in 20 years, the unthinkable happened. A human was elected Supreme Chancellor. The researchers who had once laughed about less than 10% likelihood of humans, even surviving one full galactic rotation, were now universally mocked. Clearly, they were poor mathematicians as well as poor judges of character. Of course, the council chambers did require some modifications over the years to handle human quirks. There were complaints about constant snacking during long deliberations and the occasional shouting matches as emotions flare took some getting used to, but other species soon realized that despite the brief eruptions of feeling, humans nearly always returned quickly to logic and good sense. Humans helped usher in a golden age for the Alliance. Their knack for disruption and progress shook millennia-old institutions, down to their foundations and rebuilt them better than ever. And when a new threat like the Onrak throws, humans were always first into the breach facing down horrors that made even hardened warriors quail in terror. Now, 100 years after those first doubters mocked humanity's chances, Earth stood as first among equals, the heart of civilization. And researcher Zilkrak, now chief historian Zilkrak, looked out from his orbital station and marveled at how far they had all come. His antennae twitched with amusement as an old Earth saying came to him, May you live in interesting times. For good and ill, Humanity had certainly made the galaxy a lot more interesting since their fiery arrival. Who knows what the next 100 years might bring. But this time, Zilkrok vowed not to make the mistake of underestimating humankind ever again. 